Welcome back to PJ Chain Design. This is PJ. Today in this Jury CAD design tutorial with the Rhino 3D software, I would like to show you how to create this simple leaf pendant with the B setting on the top. Are you ready? Let's get started. That's starting from the scratch. As you can see, I have a stone here, and if you want to download this stone, there's a link at the description below. Sign up a newsletter, then you're able to download this stone to follow along. When you get a stone inside, it may not be the size that you want. It may not be the place that you want. Let's talk about sizing the stone first. In this stone, if I measure from this vertex to this vertex, this is exactly 2.5 millimeter. So let's say I have a stone coming into whatever size. How do I size this to be exactly the same? You're going to use the command scale 3D and you're going to click on stone that's snapping into this vertex to this vertex. If you're just moving your mouse, it will go up and down to whatever size you want it or you want it to be exact. So I'm going to type it 2.5 and hit enter. Then this will be exactly 2.5. And I also like to have everything on my construction plan starting with the zero. So we're going to use the command for align centers. And then we are going to type it zero here. Hit enter. This will be right in the middle. OK, so let's take a look. How are we going to arrange it? I'm going to moving this one up just a little bit above the zero point. And we're going to use the command for polar array. And snapping into the zero as a center, I want to have three of them. And let's click 360 degree, then we'll have those three. Before we actually click enter, let's record history here on the bottom and hit enter. All right. So if I don't like the way the stone jamming together like this, which it shouldn't be, I should moving up just a little bit. All right. Ideally, you wanted to have a distance in between the stone is roughly uh, 0.1 to 0.2 millimeters. So I'm going to move it back just a little bit. You do not want it to be touching or very close like this because when you get the stone, it may not be exactly size, right? So you need to leave enough room for it. This is a 2.5 millimeter stone and that's dealing with the prong. I'm going to draw a straight line snapping into the zero and it doesn't have to be super long so probably just something like this and i would like to pipe it so i'm going to use the pipe command and using the round cap and let's pipe it roughly about this size that can touch all three stones just a little bit together and hit enter let's take a look on this size if we're coming into the dimension tool we can measure this one, and this is uh, about 0.39. It is way too small here. 0.39, it probably will break right away. I would like to have a 0.7, so roughly something like that. Notice that the three stone right here is cutting way too much into the prong, so the prong will be really weak if you get it cut. In this case, I'm going to move this one up just a little bit, so that way they were coming out. Each of the sizes shouldn't cut it more than like 15% of it. So then I will have a decent enough prong to stay in there. Okay. Once we have this one look really fat, um, but that one is in the middle and we want to bring it up a little bit. We need to have this tip right here is over the tabletop. All right. So you have enough room in there. Okay. So next one, uh, the one in the middle might be a little bit bigger. And then we're going to making a copy to the top by dragging with the gumball, hit the Alt key. All right. This one doesn't have to be so fat like that. So I'm going to scale it down a little bit and then double make sure because we are made for production. We want to make sure everything able to print. 0.53 is okay. I'm going to bring in a little bit. Again, you don't want to cut it too much. Less than 20%. Just want to make sure that your piece is friendly to your jewelry. All right. So then we'll have something like this. Now, I also need another piece in between here. So I'm going to have something. Again, dragging with the gumball. Hit the all key. 
then you will have that copy, right? If you like the position, and I usually like to do this way. If I draw a line in between here and here, I try to make this stay inside if possible. Uh, in this case, not necessarily have to stay inside, but if you are in a B setting, for example, that they all need to line up, this you probably will be uh, bringing this in because that is, you know, the wall of a ring shank or something like that, if that makes sense. Okay, so now we have this one. We also have this one. And since we are in the center of our construction plane, let's go ahead to use the polar array or you want to type it array and select polar. And then we hit zero. Again, we need to have three of them, 360 degree, and we'll get something like this. So this will be the arrangement for those three. Okay, we need to have the stone sit on something. The stone currently is not sitting on anything. And double make sure on the side view, look, the prong is a little bit too short. So uh, beside the middle one, I just want to move it up. Just need to make sure the prong is over the table top. Okay, uh, let's draw the tube underneath it. So we're going to snap it into the vertex and coming into really close to the side something like this. You do not want to have any underneath a bezel is too big and coming over with the size something like this and we're gonna bring it down roughly here. Okay and then we can bring this one down since it's like a little bit too tall that we cannot see the stone. So we're gonna have something like this. Everything underneath we're gonna trim it all together. So even though they are not the same height, that's okay. We just need to make sure on the top view, they look nice. Again, this piece I'm going to change to red color. So let you know that you don't want it to see any of the red from the top view. Okay, again, that's using the polar array command one more time, snapping into the zero, type it three, then we'll have all three there. Cool. All right. Now let's talk about the leaf. Whenever we are going to work on anything, we always need to know the stone size first because your stone cannot be changed size, but your metal can work within it, you know, changing the size uh, to fit whatever in the stone. So in this case, I'm going to have a leaf. Uh, it need to have uh, three stones. So I'm going to have a first stone about right this size. And moving up another one, copy it. This one is going to be smaller. And I do want those to align to the right. So let's go ahead to use an align tool. And we want to align to the right. And let me type in zero here and hit enter. Again, I want to bring this one just in a little bit and have that one to mirror to the other side by mirror command snapping into the vertex here and now I'll have something like that. That gave me a kind of invisible outline right there to working as a arc there. And I want to move it out just a little bit. Okay, so let's give it a try. We want to use the arc tool. There's a one like start and point to the arc and I'm going to snap in right here and right here and somewhere about here. Okay. And because we don't know if this one that we draw is exactly in the center or not, what I like to do is try to group them first. And again, using the align tool, I'm going to align right in the middle, click anywhere. And then this will be something like that. You want to leave a little bit distant uh, from the center. All right. We may want to have this one past the center so we can trim it later. The same thing over here, we want to have this one past the center. All right, so let's go ahead to using this one and we want it to mirror again, type it zero, holding the shift and see if this is the leaf that you like. If it is too fat, you might need to change the stone for whatever inventory that you have. But if that is your inventory, unfortunately, you just need to have a fat leaf. This might look nice. We'll see. Okay, so I'm going to copy this one and scale it down, of course, like coming over here. And I wanted to have something over here, right? So this will be my prong. One thing to keep in mind, your prong doesn't want to be less than 0.4 millimeter for production purpose. So let's measure this one. If it, it does, let's see. 
0.33 and 1 over here and when I have another one over here let me double make sure about this prong size see if I can make it slightly smaller all right so then I want to have another one over here again it's a little bit over here that's moving in something like that right uh, I do see people doing like a point three and uh, that's successful which you need to have a super clean casting and you don't need to do too much of a polish over there okay anyway um, just want to give you a guideline for what that is I usually like to have all of them in the same size the one on the side could be a little bit bigger but I don't actually like to have so many different sizes so just uh, assuming this is a 0.4 millimeter and then try to make them the same size as possible okay so then you will focus more on the stone all right so let's start making the C of this guy first of all we need to trim using the trim command to cut off this and this and to trim the one on the bottom I also like to draw a straight line going from here to here all right so then let's take a look on overall view so we got something like this right let's go ahead to making the surface first I'm gonna use the surface tool you have this one it's called surface from 2 3 or 4 H curve so we're gonna pick up this one and this one and that allow us to get this one over here I simply let me hiding all of this it's easier for you to see so I simply wanted to have this one and just going up and sitting where just just a little bit below the girdle okay um, forgot one more things we forgot to do the color so that's a group this one moving this stone down a little bit all right so now all the prong is like way too tall and we need to align to the top first so that's aligned to the top somewhere here and move it down just a little bit all right so then that's a good uh, arrangement over there we also need to do the cutter for the stone so we can cut a hole behind so what I like to do is draw something like this going straight coming down something like this maybe half of a stone width and going down straight we can make it a little bit longer and something like this and notice that they are not aligned with my stone right so I need to go into my top view pick up my stone right here and using a align tool to align in the center and we want to snapping into this vertex here so then you will get something like this to making into the surface we want to use a revolve and pick up this curve first and we want to snapping into the vertex right in the middle moving my mouse up on my right view holding the shift and I want to do 360 degree and we will get the surface like this okay I usually like it just a little bit smaller than the stone so uh, you leave some room for the jeweler to cut into the metal at the same time polish the metal okay now with this let's use the cap command then we'll get something like that I also want a color for this guy too so let's go ahead to align those two that's aligned to the center and I want to snapping into the vertex there all right apparently this is too big we just need to scale it down something like this and having this color that's using the mirror command to mirror to the other side okay so now we have something like that we wanted this to be tapered a little bit so everybody it's going to be rotated for whatever degree you want something maybe like this so now we want to create a rest of the solid let's duplicate this edges right there and one more here and let's pick up those edges that we duplicated not a surface but the edges and then let's join it 
right so once we join it we can use the loft command under the surface you have loft and you're gonna pick up the curve you're gonna pick up oh we forgot to join those let's join this first and again using the loft pick up this curve and pick up this curve and let's join it all right and then once we have it let's go ahead to join both of the surface and we'll use the command cap cap and to close it the cap command is also on here is cap planner holes uh, if you're interested in what the icon look like and then so now we have this we are ready to cut it open for the pilot hole so let's go ahead to use the boolean difference this one is difference out one two three so then we have a hole behind it's really crucial that you have a hole behind it will make your stone look brighter okay so let's double make sure everything look okay you can go ahead to boolean unit if you want to i would like to just take a look on this over here okay all right so they look really nice i'm just temporarily just gonna hold it and see the rest of them so that's unhide everything all right it's actually pretty cute i'm gonna bring this up right here it's talking underneath it there and then we can simply again polar array three piece for 360 degree so we're gonna type it zero here as a number is three and 360 degree and we'll get something like that right and all we need to do is trim everything at once on the bottom so let's go ahead to draw a box something like this so let's say you like to trim everybody at once so we're gonna pick up everybody right there and then using the bowling difference and difference out with this box right there it will break all the history but that's okay we no longer need it and then making a jump ring is simply like this we're gonna use the torus command and coming over here and getting something like this all right and we just need to tilt it move it up here tugging in make sure it's connected really well then i just need to mirror that to the other side right um again that will make sure that it's the jumper in too thin a lot of people like to solder after uh, finish the production it will make it nice and clean that way we can do that as well this is just showing like what the render should look like i hope you enjoy the video in the u.s the thanksgiving is coming and it's a lot of things to thanks for the number one things i want to thank you for being very very supportive for my channel so i'm offering a huge discount on my jewelry cat design course for the black friday if you're interested to know more and wanted to get the inside deal please sign up at the link below i will only send out a discount code by email thank you for watching and i will see See you next.